gonna go ahead and use his log table to buff this stuff up. And then I'm gonna go outside and cut some larger rounds. If you've been wondering if you should build a log table or a slab rack, watch this video. At the end, I have a side-by-side -side comparison of cutting slab wood in a slab rack and on this particular table. I'll share my thoughts and I'll also share my thoughts about what I think about the log table just for bucking rounds like I'm doing here. Later on in the video, you'll see a part where I've marked some walnut and bucked it with this particular saw. That actually took place before what you're watching here. This is why it's important to be able to sharpen your chains efficiently when you're really trying to work. I don't always get to just chip dirt off of the logs that I'm gonna be cutting. This saw was super sharp and this is the very first cut of the day. Freshly sharpened, ready to go. You can see I'm playing with fire here. I don't understand when I'm looking at myself what I'm doing, but here you are anyway. I did? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I should have looked. Dad, look at this. It's a pile. Look at it. You can see how much. Yeah, it's a pile of stuff. That's done. That's good because there's going to be a video on Brock's channel about sharpening chains. So that's perfect. I can't believe I did that. Made one cut with it. <laughs> uh, gosh dang. Look at those teeth. Oh my gosh. They're like obliterated. Yeah. Yeah, I... I... All right, so here's the side-by-side -side comparison. I think many people are tempted to build a log table to cut slabs up from their sawmill but watch how this goes with me on the left and brock at rock hill farms on the right these are both his pieces of equipment right here i like how much material you can stack in the v grooves of that slab rack in comparison it keeps all of the slabs nice and tidy you can work through it much more quickly also, something that I noticed is the log table itself is slightly taller than I would like. I really did want to use a saw with a shorter bar. I wouldn't want to grab a saw with a 24 or 28 inch because I'd be holding it up because there's obstructions below that you don't want to hit. In my opinion, I think that the slab rack is a better tool if your primary purpose is to clean up after saw milling. Yeah. 
In terms of bucking firewood rounds, it works. The only way I would implement it myself is if I could have access to the backside with a machine and I could constantly keep material rolling up onto the deck. In the current configuration here, where we have this set up for wood splitter comparisons, it just simply isn't very efficient. But again, if you had access to the backside and you could set logs up there with a grapple or forks, I could see you being able to get a lot of work done and not bend over, especially if you have a log splitter without a log lift. Here's me cutting up that walnut into firewood for some of our testing. And you can see there is a lot of dirt embedded in that bark. I cut straight through it. If you haven't watched our videos where Brock and I ran each other's log splitters, I ran his Easton Made Ultra, he ran my Split Fire 3490, I'd encourage you to go ahead and check that out at his channel. We did a comparison talking about advantages and disadvantages of each machine. I will have some footage of me running his Easton Made Ultra from this day as well. Stay tuned for that in a future video. Brock and I always have a lot of fun when we get together and I always enjoy seeing his process because he has a lot of cool toys. Everyone has a different process because we all have access to different tools, live on different properties, cut different types of wood, and have different needs overall. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Make sure you leave a comment, let me know your thoughts, 
We sure appreciate you being here. I'll see you on the next one.